So at this point, we've come a long way with our jump, but there's still some oddities, like if I hold down the space, for example, it looks like I'm on a pogo stick. We've definitely got some work to do. Let's start with this pogo stick jumping movement, which is definitely one of the easiest things to fix. We'll head over into our code and make one little change. Remember right now, if we are on the ground and are pushing the jump button, he will jump. At the moment though, this means for a rapid fire jumping, if you hold the button down. What we can do here is just simply add get button down. So now that means that it will only work once for each time that we hold the button down. I'm gonna save that. Now if I hold the button down, I just get a single jump and I actually need to do discrete presses of the button in order to jump. So if I spam it really fast, it still isn't quite as crazy as it was before. Now the next feature we're gonna add is a little bit complicated and it's definitely a bonus feature, but it's also a nice one to have. We're gonna make it so that if you hold down the jump key for a longer period of time, your player jumps higher. So let's head on over into our move script and we're gonna come down here into our update just below our current if statement that checks to see if we're on the ground and pushing the button in order to let us jump. We're gonna add a new if statement and it's gonna look a lot like the one above. We're gonna put input dot get button. And this time we're actually just gonna use the regular get button, not just the down. If they're pushing jump, then we're actually gonna borrow this line exactly from up here. Essentially what this is gonna do is if we hold the button down, while we're in the air, notice this one I don't have to be on the ground for, our player will continue to fly upward into the sky. Now that I've done that, I can still use my jump. It works just fine, but I've got the new feature of being able to hold down the button in order to jump higher. However, we don't want our character to actually fly, so we've got a little bit of work to do. The way we're gonna get rid of that is we're gonna create a timer that counts down after we push the button and then disables the ability to fly after it gets to zero. So to do that, we're gonna create two new variables up here at the top. They're both gonna be public for now, so we can watch them in Unity. And these are gonna be floats. Remember, a float is a decimal number. The first one we're gonna call jump time. And we're gonna set this one to 0.35F for now. Now the F just means that it's a float. In Unity, if I put a decimal all by itself, it will create problems and give you those red squigglies, uh, mostly because a decimal usually means that you're going inside of something, like down here where we're going inside of the physics to get the overlap circle. So we're gonna add that F. Then below that, we're gonna add another public float. This time it's going to be jump time counter. So the jump time is going to be the total value that we can of time we can spend in the air, and the counter will be the one that actually does the countdown part. Now that we've created our variables, we can put them down into our actual code. So I'm gonna go down here to where we have our if the button's down, the one that allows us to continue jumping. We're actually gonna go inside that if statement and create another if, and now we're gonna say jump time counter is greater than zero, add a squiggly bracket, and so now we're gonna make it so that if we're holding down the button and if our jump time counter is greater than zero, then it will allow us to continue to jump higher. At the moment, because our jump time counter is already at zero, as you can see down here, we're not allowed to extend our jump at all. But if I were to add that number for the jump time counter and say make it one second, I could jump forever and continue to fly because there's nothing causing our counter to jump count down. So what we need to do now is add one more line down here in our jump time counter to make it actually come down. So we'll say jump time counter minus time. Now two things here. First of all, remember that in Unity, time is done with the mathematical measurement of time dot delta time. Don't forget your semicolon at the end. And finally, you'll notice Unity doesn't like it. That's because we don't do simple minuses when we're coding. We're gonna put minus equals. So our jump time counter will now be equal to the subtraction of time. It's weird, but go with it. Now things will be working in Unity. The only problem is that once we jump once, we'll run out of jump time counter because it never gets reset. So the place that we're gonna to wanna to put this in is up here with our initial jump. Essentially what we wanna do is make it so that every time we start a jump, our jump time counter starts, um, gets reset so that it can start counting down. So we're gonna say jump time counter is equal to jump time. 
just one equal here because we're actually setting them to be equal. So every time I make initiate a jump, my counter will then go up to whatever jump time is set to, which is currently decimal three five seconds. We're now most of the way there. I can initiate a jump. I can hold it down in order to jump higher. Now you might find that that jumps a little too high, but we can adjust that by changing our settings. The only problem now is that when I jump while falling, I can reinitiate another jump. And that's not really what I want. That's a strange effect. So we're going to add one more round of things into our script. What we need to do now is create a Boolean statement, a true false statement that allows Unity to check for whether or not we are already in the middle of a jump. And if we are not to allow us to jump again. So this one, we'll make it private because we aren't going to need to change this at all in Unity. It's a bool, boolean, which means true or false. I'm just going to call this one is jumping so that when we're jumping, it'll be set to true. And when we're not jumping, it'll turn to false. Now, first of all, what we want to do is we want to make it so that if we are pushing the jump button, so we're already in a jump, it's going to now check to see if we're still holding the button down. And then we're also going to add and it's going to check to see if we are actually in the middle of a jump. So we'll now check to see if we're actually supposed to be jumping. And if we are, it'll check to see if our we have time left on our counter and then it'll allow us to extend our jump. Now, one of the things we're going to have to do here, though, is actually make it so that is jumping can be set to false. So to do that, we're going to add something we haven't done before, which is an else statement. The way else works is it's first of all, just going to check to see whether all of these things are true. And if they're not true, it will run this other piece of code instead. So we're going to here go is jumping is equal to false. We're also going to go up here to the initial jump. And as soon as we initiate a jump, we want to set is jumping to be true. So the game now knows that we are jumping. And because we're jumping, it will allow us to continue to push the jump until the timer runs out. Once the timer does run out, it'll go to this else statement, which will set our is jumping to be false. There's one last thing we're going to do. And that is just simply we want to make it so that if the button is lifted up is jumping is set to false as well. So our jump timer, our ability to jump will run out once the timer hits zero, but it's also going to run out if we lift up the jump. So once we're starting to fall again, it won't let us jump anymore. So we're just going to go if and in brackets input dot button up. And in this case, it's the jump button. Do your curly brackets. Oops. And in here, we will also set is jumping to be equal to false. All right, that should do it. We've now got a nifty jump there. You can hold the button in order to jump higher. But while falling, we can't reinitiate another jump. So you're only able to jump once at a time. That sort of thing. Now, obviously, this guy's jump is a little OP. And you're going to want to spend some serious time getting your values just right to do this, that you're going to want to play around with the amount of time you allow your guy to be in the air, your jump time. But you're also going to want to play with some things like your jump force and up in your rigid body, your gravity scale. Try to tweak these so that you get things just right. All right, go ahead and give this a try for yourself. Mm -hmm.